The Small Business Show, episode 181 for Wednesday, July 25th, 2018. Folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is by, for, and about small business. Sponsors for this episode include Text Expander, which we'll talk about shortly here. For the moment, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm Shannon Jean. I'm happy to be here. How are you, man? I am good. It's, uh, as we mentioned in the last show, we both had some travel that, uh, that took us away. So it's nice. It's actually nice to be back in the podcasting chair and, yeah. and uh, making these things happen. So it's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. I, I always feel a sense of withdrawal when we uh, miss a week or so after we have to pre record. So it's awesome to be back this it's week. Absolutely. Well, it's not just us today, Shannon. We have That's a guest right. with us. And, you know, uh, there are some people that you routinely encounter that you've never met or, in the case of today's guest, never even spoken to uh, up until our pre-show today. Um, but we have many mutual friends, and uh, our guest today has spent most of the last decade refining the idea of what he calls and what we also call a lifestyle business, both for himself and as well as for all of his consulting clients that want to learn from him. So it is my great pleasure to welcome Kamanzi Constable to the show. Kamanzi, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Dave and Shannon, thank you so much for being here. Uh, just kind of hearing you guys go back and forth, your vibe, I feel like I'm invited to your party. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, right? It's nice. just it's nice. just our party here, and uh, and and it's not just the three of us; it's all our listeners too. Everybody, everybody really participates and 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 gets something out of the show. Although selfishly, Shannon and I have a competition as to which one of us gets more out of each episode. But that's okay. That's you know that's a good thing because then everybody learns, so it's good. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yeah. You want to take it, Shannon? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. So, hey, uh, okay, Kamanzi, let's, uh, you know, sometimes we start at the beginning or, and everything, but what we want to hear about l now, let, let's talk about today. Um, you know, what's your usual day, your week, your month like uh, right now? And then then we can get into, you know, how you wound up here uh, today. Well, my, my day is not typical because a large element of what I do in my business involves travel and it involves international travel. So the primary part of my business is I go into corporations, fortune 100 to 500 companies, and I teach them about digital marketing, new media. So, and I travel to about 25 countries a year. So if you do the math on one year in 25 countries, and you kind of figure out how often I travel, I'm moving quite a bit. So in the days that I'm travel, those are usually long travel days. Um, a lot of airports, a lot of sky lounges all over the world. And then when I get there, I still haven't mastered jet lag. I've tried everything that everybody said about jet lag, but I'm still not there yet. So the, the first day is usually like a loss. But if I am at home in Wisconsin, where I'm based out of, what my day usually is, is it's probably a pretty typical day, like a nine to four as far as like what I'm going to do in business. But I'll, I mean, if you want to know everything, guys, I, <laughs> <laughs> I get a up, while. Yeah, I get up in the morning. I exercise. I then meditate. I try not to do any business stuff before nine ish. And then normally what I have when I'm home is I will have calls with companies that are interested in working with my team or bringing us in to do a gig. I will have people online that are interested in and writing for some publications and whatnot um, that will buy like a strategy session or something like that. So I'll usually schedule those calls in the morning. And then a large part of what I do is writing because I write about 25,000 words a week. So if what I do at home, if you want to know what I did at home, it's, it's probably pretty standard and a little boring. No, that sounds great. I have a lot more questions now than I have in front of me. <laughs> so that, that, that's always a good answer. So, okay, let, let me jump back in and, uh, you know, reading your, your backstory a little bit when Dave said, uh, you know, he, he got you to come on the show. You know, it looks like you've always been an entrepreneur, always had something going on. Um, uh, but has that always been the case? Or have you always been self-employed doing your own thing or have you worked for other uh, companies along the way? 
kind of started my adult journey at 17. And at 17, I got traditional jobs, you know, the Burger King and the Target and, and whatnot. When I turned 18, and I was slightly illegally adult. I actually got my CDL and I worked for a while for Pepsi and Frito-Lay and Coca-Cola and Sara Lee and companies like that. When I turned 19 is when I did have the chance to start my first business. It kind of happened by accident, but it was a vacation relief service for independent vendors that deliver here in Wisconsin, Illinois. Oh. Yeah. And that business was, it was a pretty good business for a 19 year old kid to be bringing in half a million dollars a year was pretty exciting time. Oh yeah. That's pretty. So you, so you would, you would be essentially offer yourself out as the person that could drive when, when someone else needed to go on vacation. Is that, I mean, it, it's essentially what, what that business started as? That's exactly what it is because the guys that are independent uh, vendors, the company doesn't provide a vacation person for them. Right. So for some of the guys here in Wisconsin, they hadn't gone on vacation in like eight years. So when I came in and said, look, I'm going to show up every day. I'm not going to smash up your hundred thousand dollar truck. And I mean, these guys are investing 250 to half a million dollars in a franchise. So they weren't just going to hire anybody off the street. So when I came in and showed up and showed them, I was going to do a good job. I had work for like two years pretty quickly. Wow. That's great. That's yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Opportunity knocks, right? You know, you find like if you can find somebody that has the financial means to take a vacation, but can't detach from their business and hasn't been able to do that for eight years, that person is ripe for uh, with opportunity. <laughs> that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, so. I'm I'm fascinated with with this this kind of both sides of what you're doing because you you know you're doing a, a sounds like a, a lot of consulting, um, but as well you know you're you're a coach for other uh, entrepreneurs that are trying to get into what sounds like similar business. So let's let's take the consulting part um, first and kind of break that down. Um, how does that work, and how did you get into the position you're in today, uh, where you're going and consulting and digital marketing to these uh, you know, Fortune 500 and 100 companies. Absolutely. So, and I got going in 2000 and. 11 ish into this whole world of online when I actually discovered a podcast. It's funny how that works. I yeah, actually discovered yeah. a smart passive income with Pat Flynn, oh, which yeah. a lot of, a lot of people discover. And when he started talking about making money online and making money from your brain and all that kind of stuff, it just lit a fire under me. So, um, to fast forward to what I do today, my business is broken up in three divisions, guys. So one is corporate consulting where I'm going to do the gigs. The second, Second is an agency where I have a team and we take on done for you projects. So if I go to a corporation, I tell them about how great podcasting is, they might say, Hey, we want you to actually set up our company's podcast. So I have a team that does the actual agency work. And then the third part of it is the online stuff, which is people that want to know how to do what I do. So with the corporate side of this, how I got into this was in 2012, I had built an online business like a lot of other people were doing. I was selling courses and membership websites and doing coaching and whatnot. And all, it was great. It was amazing. I had a business that was generated about $5,000 a month, but I knew that there was more opportunity than just what I was seeing online because I had so much experience with local business with the first business that I did. I knew that I could take all this knowledge that I gained online and I could take this into offline local companies. I knew that local companies would not move as fast as people online would move. So I knew that I knew just a little bit more than they did. I could go market myself as a digital market. Well, back then it was social media marketing consultant and I would be able to teach them a few things that they didn't know and I could book gigs. And that's exactly what happened. I started uh, looking at companies in Milwaukee that were a little bit smaller. I looked at their online presence and it was terrible as you can imagine and i just went and i simply said look um this is an opportunity that's growing it's expanding very fast here's my business and what i've been able to do with my business and social media i like to teach you how to do this and i got you know in 2012 i sent out 180 proposals to companies and that year i ended up booking 36 paid gigs it didn't light the world on fire but it sure. brought in an additional forty eight thousand dollars in income and and that's what got me going on the corporate. So I started small, 
local, getting local companies, and then from there just building to bigger and bigger companies till the point where 2015 is when I landed my first quote unquote major corporation. And then from there, it was a matter of referrals from the gigs that I had done before. Um, some of the places that I'm a contributor for, I write for a lot of different publications that brings corporations that have an interest and then meeting other business owners at networking events or when I'm out there consulting. Man, so that's is, so great. This is fascinating. Yeah. Cause you, I mean, it, you know, what you just described is, is someone you that you never stop hustling, but you, it, it's, it's not just that you never stop hustling because if that's all it was, what you'd still be doing is designing websites for other companies. Right. But in, yeah. in instead of that, you thought, wait a minute, I can go and teach these people how to do this. That's actually more valuable to them and more valuable to you. And, and you leveraged it. Like, it seems like everything you do is leveraged off of what you've done in the past, right? You, you showed companies, you essentially used your own online presence as proof that you could teach them how to make their own. And now you've got, you know, these articles that, that uh, essentially paint you as an expert, as the expert that you are, I don't mean to imply you're not an expert, but you, you're you're out there doing things that prove who you are, but not just for the money that you'd get from, you know, from writing an article for some website. Sure, you take that money, but then you leverage that for the next thing. It, there's 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 multi many, many uh, opportunities in every single thing you do. I, I think it's fantastic. Multifaceted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity out here. And especially with the corporate side of thing, it, it kind of lights me up to talk about this because for somebody who offers like you guys are podcasters and I used to co-host a podcast with Jared Easley, who yeah. is, yeah, was one of the founders of podcast movement. And so like I'm involved in, in podcasting, um, the space, at least like I'm a fanboy. <laughs> but for those of you that have podcast services, you're going after people online and you're teaching them how to do a podcast, you're helping them set them up. Whereas what you're charging online, you could charge like five times that in a corporation. So like when I see this opportunity and Dave is connected with me on social media, so he sees me talking about this a bit. I'm, I'm genuinely excited because there is genuinely this amount of opportunity in corporations. Isn't that no, that's fascinating? Great. Yeah. You know, one huh. thing I also I want to go back and touch on that in your uh, description of how you get started and, and what you're doing is uh, your point where, you know, the the numbers in the beginning may not be, you know, earth shattering, but it, it's that continual development and knowing that, okay, you know, if, if I can make five grand a month, you know, I got to be able to make, you know, five times or whatever, more than that. And we, we talk about that a lot here on the show, you know, come up with a way, how do you walk out the door and make a thousand bucks? Uh, and I, I would say when you were doing that, you know, is there anything you did special that, that kept you motivated, even though the numbers may not have been, you know, crazy at the beginning? Uh, it was it just enough to make anything when you were getting started or how, how did that work? I set initially I set some goals for myself as far as revenue, what I wanted to hit and what it would take to get there. And that very first gig that I booked was five hundred dollars. The second gig that I booked was fifteen hundred dollars. The third gig that I booked was fifteen hundred dollars. So we're, we're not talking about earth shattering amounts. But this idea of getting five hundred or fifteen hundred dollars to come in for two hours to show them what to do and to leave. And I have no ongoing obligation. Yeah. I have no um, I'm not tied to the results that they're going to get. That to me was the motivation. Like, look, you did this. You got paid yeah, for your knowledge. And if you did this a few times, you can do this again and you can start to charge more. Yeah, that's great, man. And and that that is just extremely powerful. And, you know, I. I just always try to reiterate that to our listeners is because so many folks are just shooting for this big number to get there like right away. And, and you really have to put your time in and, and build that expertise like you've done and then, and then just keep working on it exponentially. That's fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah that's well, it, it seems like you're not, it, not only are you not afraid to reinvent or evolve your, yourself or your career, that, that is your career is is constantly evolving and and not just doing the same thing that's, that's fascinating it's great 
Smart. Yeah, that's that's a lesson. When I first started entrepreneurship, my parents weren't entrepreneurs, and I didn't have anybody in my life who was an entrepreneur. But when I did meet my first mentor, um, the one thing that he told me is he said, don't ever get complacent in your successes. He said, celebrate them shout from the rooftops, but don't get complacent where years later, you're still, that's all you're focused on is what you did, not what you're doing now or what you're going to do. You're living in what you did. And so I've always tried to adopt that mindset that, yeah, the successes are amazing and I'm going to celebrate them, but I don't want to be the person that you see online marketing something that they did, you know, 20 years ago and they haven't done anything since. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of folks out there. And as we roll and talk about coaching a little bit, there's a lot of people out there selling courses and coaching and, and pushing very big numbers and, you know, quick super success. And I'm always a little dubious of that, having spent, you know, 25, 30 years building, you know, uh, several companies up and, and uh, just even like the podcast, how long it takes you to really build a solid audience. And I, I always want to get that message across, which is fantastic. Very cool. So let, let, let's stick with this or let's move into the coaching realm. Um, what was the impetus to start again, teaching people what you were doing so they could essentially do the same thing, right? Is it, am I reading that right? Yes. So I have got into the corporate consulting and it was going extremely well. I almost thought at some point I would scrap all my online presence completely because, because it was quite so well in corporate. And sometimes when you're dealing with some characters online, it could be quite interesting. Sure. Um, but <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> when I started this and when I got into this, I knew that I wanted to help people and I generally want to help people. I knew that there were people that were just like me that had built online businesses, maybe built brick and mortar businesses. And maybe they feel like they're a small fish in a big pond. And maybe they want to be the big fish in the small pond. And so I knew that this was an opportunity that that, that would be interested in. And more than that, um, I have a, a pretty large email list from all my years of writing and being online. And Every single day, somebody would on from the email list would message about, hey, I'd like to know more about what you're doing with corporations, and I'd like to know how I could do it. And it was probably four or five months of people constantly sending me messages saying, I want to know how to do this. I want to know how to do this. And then at that point, I'm like, you know, it took a while, but the light bulb went off at that point. Like, <laughs> Yeah, sure. They they've taught me what business to be in. Yep. The need was there. They have, they already validated. They told me that they wanted this. And on top of that, when I started looking at the market, I realized there weren't very, there were very few people that were teaching how to get into corporations and book corporate gigs. So I knew that even online in what can feel like a crowded space, this was going to be a topic that nobody else was talking about. Yeah, that's Smart. really cool. And, and I, I like how, you know, as you built up your credibility over time, uh, you've just, you know, leveraged that into other things, you know, whether it's uh, the, the writing gigs uh, to getting your name nationally known or internationally. Uh, I think I think that's great. So I, 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 I want to go ahead. I want to. Yep. Well, I want to ask a question because email lists, I think, are a oft overlooked very valuable thing still in today's world. And I want to ask that question, but first I want to talk about our sponsor here for a couple minutes, and then I'm going to ask that question. And our sponsor today, as I mentioned earlier, is text expander from smile where at textexpandercom slash podcast, you get 20% off your subscription for the first year of this amazing tool that certainly both Shannon and I use and many, many other listeners use as well. Text Expander allows you to create perfectly crafted snippets that you spend your time on getting every little word and every bit of punctuation and everything just right. And then you put them into Text Expander and you can invoke them when you're, say, replying to a customer email. So somebody emails Kamanzi and says, hey, I'd like to learn more about your coaching so that I can be a business consultant. So Kamanzi could have this pre-written, perfectly crafted, evolved response that's in Text Expander, invokes that, puts it into an email, and then you can tweak it from there. But you're starting with something. You're not writing from memory. You're not writing from, you know, copy paste from another email that you got to go and like dig and find it's all just right there. And if you have a team, Text Expander can be synced, all of those snippets synced to everyone on your team. So everyone's starting from the same place. 
If you're running a business, and frankly, even if you're not yet, you've got to check this out. Textexpander.com slash podcast is where you go. As I said, you save 20% off your first year. And our sincere thanks to the folks at Text Expander and Smile for sponsoring this episode. All right, Kamanzi. So email lists. It, it, everybody that I talk to that's uh, like it, successful in this way and, and in many other ways always sort of casually mentions, oh, yeah, I have an email list like it, it, it's it's the core of my business. And and I think so many people because of social media with Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and everything else says, oh, email lists are dead. People only get information from me on social media when I think, frankly, exactly the opposite is true. So do you still use your email list today? Absolutely. It's the core of what I do online. And I would even venture to say that there are probably some companies that sign up there just to kind of peek at what I'm doing. But I spent when I when I started this journey, I started this journey as an author. And so I self-published a book and that book flopped like it sold five copies in six months. And that got me realizing that the reason why the book doesn't sell or why people can't get coaching clients or why anything doesn't sell is because they don't have an audience. And I had realized that looking at social media, social media is great. Billions of users. But we all know that the reach is limited and it's always ever changing. And more than that, that's those people's platforms. That's Facebook's platform. That's LinkedIn platform. Yep. So I knew that an email list was where I could get some captive people that had a better chance of seeing what I have going on. These are people that have the permission-based marketing. They give me permission to let them know what I have going on in my life and business. So I spent from 2012 till now building up a list of about 55,000 people. So when I want to sell a course, when I want to put something out there that I'm doing a new post, the new, like when I share this podcast interview with my list, you're probably going to get some new listeners. When I want to share what's going on, I do have that ability to go there and do that. And yes, that has been the core of what's driven the online portion of my business. God, that's amazing. It, it's so easy to overlook in, in any business and, and really should not be <laughs> like if you don't have an email list for yourself, maybe that's the first takeaway from from this episode is go start that and 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 then kind of evolve from there so that you're not missing any time. Yep. Yeah. And, and what I love about it is, is to your point, these are these are folks that want to be in touch with you. You're not chasing them down. They're like, oh, we want I want to be involved in what's going on. I want to hear your updates. Uh, and, the, you know, it's a it's a great target audience. Absolutely. Very cool. Okay. So let, let's talk about that promoting yourself a little bit more. Um, you know, in your name, I mean, you barely start to type, you know, uh, K I M A N in Google and your name comes right up. And I love that. I can always tell somebody's doing something right. Um, what are the top three things that you make sure you're doing every week to ensure that, you know, your, your, your name is constantly out there and that self-marketing uh, never stops. Uh, one is to be real and authentic I think that there's a lot of sugar coating that happens in life. Like it's, you've, you've seen the highlight reel on social media, right? Where somebody is, or other people are posting about this and that and all the good things, but I want to post every part of the journey. And I think it's fair to say it because Dave is connected to me that I do post a lot of different parts of the journey where it's the wins, the losses, the things that have me scratching my head, the crazy people that sometimes come out of the woodwork, you know, what, whatever it is, I want to share. I always told myself that I would share the complete picture of what it takes to build an online business hmm. so that somebody got the complete picture. So I think real and authentic is one. Two, I always try to add practical value. So not just value, but practical value, because there are some good posts that are really good and you get value from them and you learn from them. But when I post something specifically about what I do, I want it to be tactical and practical. I want people to read that. that they're going to be able to go implement the steps that I'm talking about and get the results. And I've, that's what's helped me grow online is people will read some of the posts that I put out and Dave will tell you they're very tactical. Do this, do that. You want to book a consulting gig? Here's how you can book your very first one. Here's the company that you can pitch. Here's an example yeah. of what you do. You've got contact yeah. information in, in your posts. Like, look, here's somebody ripe for the picking. Somebody go get it. That's it. Yep. 
Oh, that's and great. So, and so, yeah, the second thing is I just try to, I try to add a value because you're, if you ever want to sell anything, the sale happens when people know, like, and trust you, we, we all know that, but more than anything, the sale happens when you have added value to somebody, when you've added value to them, they've seen that value. They understand your expertise and it's a, it's a better way to sell versus you trying to pound why somebody should buy your things. So I think that's too. And three, I, I genuinely like people. So I'm always connecting with new people. I'm always uh, trying to make myself available when I have the time. If I can't hop on a quick call, I will send some messages back and forth, but I've, I understand the value of connection and networking and marketing. And so I make those connections. I network, I build my network. I try to connect with like-minded people and that that's just kind of helped. That's great. So uh, along this, it, the same lines, how, how much of your time do you, do you uh, think you're spending marketing yourself and your, your business offerings versus actually going out and doing the work and the, and the consulting? Well, the consulting takes up the most part of my time. So whether it's actually traveling to do the gig or it's working with my team on a project that we're finishing for a company or it's talking to new companies, I would say that's probably 70% of my time is stuff related to corporate consulting. I would say probably 10% of my time is things online. So whether that's creating those posts, whether that's marketing a course that I'm selling or whether that's connecting, it's probably 10% of my time. Um, and then the other, uh, 20% of my time is probably spent watching a little too much Netflix and stuff. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. So, oh, so this is, this is interesting to me because you are a prolific content. Um, I don't want to necessarily say creator though. That may very well be accurate, but certainly uh producer, right? I mean, you like content is just pouring out on your, on your social media feeds all the time. Do you batch that stuff up and 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 to make valuable use of that 10 percent of your time so that so that things are constantly coming out so that it's not this this, you know, detour and distraction every hour or something? How do you manage that? Absolutely. I, I learned about the value of systems from a mentor. So I have systems in place such as with content, I have a content plan. So whether it's the publications that I write for, what I'm going to send to my website or what I'm going to post on social media, I'm following a very specific plan that I laid out the month before. So I'll sit down at the beginning of the month and think about, okay, this is what I want to talk about next month as it relates to my business and the different things that are going on, the different things that I will end up promoting. I create a content plan and I lay that out plan. And then when it comes to actually creating content, I do most of that on Sundays where I do sit down and batch and I'll sit down for six to eight hours at a time. I'll write all of my, I write for 14 publications. So it's a little bit of writing every week. Um, so I'll sit down and I'll do that writing. And then I'll also write some of those value social media posts, the ones that are specifically about here's how to get on a publication. Here's how to book a consulting gig. Here's how to do something in your lifestyle business. Yes, I will batch all of that on a Sunday. That's smart. Wow. That's yeah, great. Makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, we, we talked a little earlier about uh, lifestyle business and, you know, we, we place a lot of value on that. We refer to it as a, uh, you know, small business owner being able to live a charmed life where, uh, you know, it sounds like we, we, we work to, det to detach ourselves, but we actually are kind of engrossed in it. And we, you know, we love the work, uh, and we may not have, uh, you know, freedom, but we have a tremendous amount of flexibility. Um, and it kind of keeps us energized, keeps us going, you know, what do you do to enjoy that, the uh, charmed life, uh, that you've created for yourself? Yeah, when I when I started this, I had an online business where it offered the traditional things online. But when I thought about what I really want to build, it was that term lifestyle business where I wanted the life part to come first, not the business part. I wanted the business to supplement what I wanted to do in my life. Mm. And I have, I have three children and they're teenagers, so they require some maintenance um, yep. and I have family and friends and I didn't want to be the type of entrepreneur that's no, no offense to Gary Vaynerchuk, but I didn't want to be that type of entrepreneur. I respect him. I love what yeah. he does, but I don't want to be working from 6am to 10pm at night. Right. Like I just, I didn't want to do that. I wanted the balance. So for me, I wanted to create a business that had financial, it gave me financial freedom. It gave me freedom and control of my life. 
and the different things that I want to do. And so that's what I did. Even though I, I probably work, if I'm being fair, I probably work maybe 30 hours a week or so on different aspects of the business. And then that other time I'm doing the things that I want to do that are going to help me live my life, but also become the best version of myself. You know, whether it's, you know, I'm trying to get become healthier, whether I want to be involved in every single activity that's going on with my kids, volunteering my time in the community where I live in, the business helps fund all that, which is why I call a lifestyle business helps. It's like the, it's the gas that helps all of this keep going. Yeah, that's great. I, I, I commend you for that, man. It's really powerful. Um, you also mentioned earlier that, you know, you've that transparency in talking about what's working, what's not, or, you know, uh, and, and we talk about the same thing here. We try to talk about it uh, and ask all of our folks that come on the show, which I'm going to ask you now is, you know, we're big fans of mistakes. Uh, we've made a lot of them and we've learned a tremendous amount. Um, they teach us so much. What What would you say has been one of the best, and I'm quoting air quotes here, best mistake you've made with your business that you've uh, learned the most from? I think that it's going, It's it's been going after opportunities that were quote unquote bigger than where I was at. So whether it was that wouldn't give me the time of day or a publication that wouldn't give me the time of day or putting out a course that was maybe priced a little too high or, or, or something to that fact, but it's, it's going after opportunities that um, in theory, and I'm doing this in air quotes would be bigger than where I am, but I just went for many ways. And I got a lot of no's, like way more no's than I got yeses. Well, no's and just being straight out ignored, which I think can be worse than a no. Oh yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Every one of those no's was like fuel to the fire. Like, yes, like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm motivated. I'm pumped. I am going to get this. And every no just inspired me. And, and it still does. Like I get no's all the time like i just i'm I'm talking to you guys now uh yesterday i had a consulting deal was going to be probably the biggest deal that i've done to date and it was going to be amazing it's going to provide work for even some more people to bring out of my team we got to the negotiation phase and they wouldn't budge on wanting to own the intellectual property and i wasn't going to budge on that either and the thing just fell apart and after three months of working on this and putting together like that that sucks and that, that doesn't feel good in the moment but each one of those experiences the no's or the deals that fall apart or being ignored i think that's helped me be stronger and more determined to keep taking action yeah, that's killer that's great well yeah. uh, i it mean sucks, I, it I, sucks I, about that deal but it sounds like you made the right decision so yeah 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 absolutely i mean some just some great lessons here today in in your story and the you know types of stuff that you're up to uh and i, and I know we're going to be we're going to be talking a lot more about them um what's the best way for you know people to learn more about what you're doing and get connected with you could head to my website, which is kconstable.com. That's K C O N S T A B L E.com. And you'll find some very good, free, valuable posts that have practical, tactical action because that's kind of the thing that I'm shooting for. And, and you'll get some value there. That's, yeah, awesome. that's great. Thanks yeah, so thank you. much for joining us, yep, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Gosh, this, this, this is just chock full. I love it when we, we have an interview like that. I mean, this, you know, interview is the wrong word. When we have a conversation like this and it just, you know, so much great information and, and you've got such a great story too. It's uh, thanks so much for spending the time with us. This is great. Yeah. Dave, Shannon, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you back, check in on you once in a while. And once again, I've learned the most here today. No, it was me, <laughs> man. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> We've got listeners shaking their fists at the at, at their radios or their car stereos right now saying, no, no, it was me. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Awesome. All right, folks. Well, uh, that does it for this week. Again, Kamanzi, thank you so much. Make sure, folks, to check out kconstable.com to learn more about uh, perhaps how Kamanzi's uh, content and and services and all of that might uh, apply for you. And uh, and check us out, of course, businessshow.co. If you want to join the small business support group, businessshow.co slash Facebook. And, of course, feedback at businessshow.co. Keep living that charmed life, folks. See you next week.